want to talk about rewilding in this episode. What I mean by rewilding, what I think of that, and how we can rewild ourselves really at any age, but why I am so excited about younger generations that are rewilding themselves and taking their little kids along for the journey. So I'm going to talk about that. And I also got a question that I thought was really great from from a listener or a viewer on YouTube. I'm not sure where they're getting their content, but to ask very practically, how do you prioritize health? How am I arranging my life to prioritize health? So I was going to give you just a really concrete example about something that happened today where I had to actually remind myself and even kind of, I would say, make myself go outside when I didn't want to because I'm prioritizing health and that's what's important to me. So I'll give you that concrete example too. And then we'll talk more about rewilding. And this episode is sponsored by two um, companies, earthing.com, which is where I get all of my earthing products, my grounding mat, my grounded sheets, all the products that I use to help with earthing or grounding. So I will post a link to earthing.com and you can check them out if you want to. And I get my earthing or grounded grounding shoes from Harmony 783. They used to not have many in my size and now they have lots of my size. It's so exciting, but I really love those shoes. And it's just an easy way when I'm walking the dog or I'm out and about, if I don't want to be barefoot, I can still be practicing grounding with my grounded shoes. So I will post the link both to Harmony and I will post the discount code. So if you wanna get a little discount on those, you can. All right, let's talk first about prioritize. Well, let's just talk about priorities in general. So I think one of the things that was really helpful for me years and years ago when I was doing a lot of the the shame resilience work. So personally, I was doing that work and then also professionally working with other people. And one of the exercises is to get really clear about your core values. So you pick kind of one main core value and then you can have a couple more, right? So you're looking at like one to three. I have three core values and it's helpful to return to that when I have tough decisions to make, or when I'm trying to figure out where to prioritize, I can come back to my core values and go, okay, that it just helps me. It helps kind of anchor me or when the poop is really hitting the fan or it's super stressful time, or you're in this kind of, we call it like the storm, the light in the storm, right? The core values really help center you, bring you back to your core of who you are and what's important to you. Not that you couldn't change your core values, but in 10 or more years, mine have not changed. I would say they've probably always been important to me, but you could change them. You could change your mind at some point, and that would be absolutely fine. But it's helpful to do some digging, some thinking, maybe some exploring, maybe not even thinking, because what I thought were my core values turned out to be not quite what what I landed on for my core values. I d- would do like some art projects. I'm not really an artsy craftsy kind of person, but I did let myself just do some art around just thinking about the core values. And then I really paid attention to my life for the the little bit of time, maybe a few days or a week around when I was really trying to get clear on my core values. So some kind of creative process is helpful because you want it to kind of bubble up from your unconscious, like a gift from your unconscious, because sometimes our core values are so core to us, we don't even see them. We don't even recognize them as, you know, they're not right in front of our face. It's like, oh, of course, that's my core value. What I'm talking about for me, like health has always been super important to me. So I knew core core value would be health and family So those were there, but I think I had a couple of other ones that I was toying with and I didn't even really think about freedom as my core, core, core value. And I was doing all this art and and what's just funny is to look back now at some of the art, like freedom is the biggest word 
in the middle of this art project that I did, but I still did, it didn't really connect until some time later when it became super clear to me that freedom is my core value. Um, my core values are freedom, family, and health. So when I have, you know, tough decisions, I bring it back to those core values. What this has to do with prioritizing is that sometimes, well, first of all, I went to a workshop years ago too, and the the man giving the workshop said, you can only have one priority at a time. We don't have priorities. And I thought, you are not a mother is exactly what I thought because I was like, every mama knows we got more than one priority at any given time. But he made a, a significant point, and it, I've remembered it to this day, that in any one time, I have a priority, and I just can move those around. And my priority is, for a, a long time and often, is health, my own health, my family's health. And the way that I prioritize my health has evolved over the last decade, right? The things that I was doing a decade ago in the name of health, my own healing journey are different from the things that I'm doing now, but it's still my priority, right? So for instance, I, every single morning I get up and I see the sunrise. I cannot tell you how helpful that has been. Not only is that helping on a cellular level from a quantum biology perspective for my circadian rhythms, that is really important to have that, the frequencies of light that are available first thing in the morning at sunrise, really to help set the tone, set, set the clock for the day. But it's also just been really helpful. I know where I'm going to be in the morning. And even when I am traveling or whatever I'm doing, I do my best to get out. I get out in early morning light. Even if it's not quite sunrise, I get out in early morning light. So I know where I'm going to be every single day, first thing in the morning. And it's really been um, interesting to watch how helpful that has been with my anxiety because I don't feel as anxious, probably because there is, I'm doing all the other things to support my circadian rhythms. I'm doing all the quantum health strategies, but I'm telling you this one practice of getting up and going straight outside Well, I I hit the bat, I pee, and then I go straight outside, right? So to just know, to have that ritual, to have that relationship with our son has been really healing to my nervous system. And it also, even if I start to feel a little anxious about, like, I don't know what else I have to do tomorrow. What am I, I know where I'm going to be first thing in the morning. So I just don't have to feel anxious about that. So that has been really, really helpful. And that's one way that I prioritize health for me. And then I usually walk the dog. Um, he, he gets walked usually after sunrise so that I can get some UVA light because that's the, the frequency. UVA are the frequencies that are most associated with mood and focus and really helpful. Plus, it just works for my life to usually walk him at that time. I usually wear my grounding or earthing shoes when I do that. And then I come back and my neighbors always say, oh, it's time to walk your husband. And I was like, that's right. I'm walking the husband. Then I walk the husband. Um, not every day can look quite like this, but that those are that's usually how I prioritize my mornings. And then I take light breaks throughout the day. So today... I did two sessions and then I really wanted to go ahead and record this episode and I had already been on, on some kind of device for at least two hours and I thought, no, you need to st stand up, you need to stretch, you need to drink water, you need to go outside. And I really didn't want to because I was in the mood to go ahead and make this video or this podcast episode and I had to just remind myself that my priority is health and what's healthy is to go outside and take breaks. And that's my commitment to myself is to take these light breaks. So you don't want to beat up on yourself. If you decide I really have this important deadline, I can't do it, whatever you make the choice. What I felt for years was that I didn't really have a choice. 
I would feel like I needed to get to whatever the next thing was, particularly around work. Work is really important to me always. It's where I find a lot of satisfaction. So I will spend a lot of time there. And I find a lot of reasons to spend a lot of time there. And I had to really kind of reshape my life, but also reshape some of my self-talk so that I'm kind of a coach to myself, not a harsh coach, but definitely kind of a coach that holds myself accountable kind of coach to say, this is a priority for you and you need to go outside right now. If you have to set timers on a, or a chime or something on whatever device, phone, something, then you might want to do that with whatever it is that you're incorporating into your own health. Um, if health may not actually be a priority for you, whatever your priority is, right? So that is how I, that's a real concrete example of how I have to talk to myself that this isn't like, uh, it's pretty, it's not hard, right? It's not, it's simple, but sometimes it takes effort on my part too, to make this choice, consciously make a choice every single day that I'm going to make health a priority. So I like to think of, I like getting our core values that can help you with some clarity around your priority, but also you can also think about intention. And when you know what your core values are, then it can help you kind of with an overarching intention. You might have an intention for the day. You might have an intention for the next meeting that you're going into. You might have an intention for your workout for the day, whatever your, your intention can shift, but kind of that overarching intention. And I like to work with intentions. It's just a different energy. It's just a different way of working with what you want in your life, like who you're becoming, what you are becoming and a focus on what you're becoming. So the core values, this intention, prior prioritizing, and really thinking about priority, what's the priority right here, right now in this moment? And that can shift. So the priority might have been, you know, if you have children or if you have certain things you have to get done for your job or whatever, your priority can be those things. And then you can just make sure that you're checking in with your core values and your overarching intention. And then people say, well, what about goals? Well, to me, goals are helpful in kind of the here and now, those measurable goals. But I also think it's kind of funny when people are like, well, what are your goals? It's kind of like if Obi-Wan Kenobi said to Luke, Luke, what are your SMART goals? That wouldn't necessarily be unhelpful for Luke to know, but it's just kind of not the point because we're talking about using the force. So to me, intentions are kind of like using the force, like the bigger picture, this uh, energy, right? And then your goals are kind of under that would be my maybe the smart goals where you're figuring out the steps that you want to take on a daily basis to reach um, a certain point in your life or to, to manifest your intention. But I always do that with the idea of my core values, right? Okay. So that was just an example that came up today that I thought might be helpful for you all. Uh, rewilding. Let's go into rewilding. What rewilding means to me, when I look at the community, there's this rewilding movement and it's about being in harmony with nature, with your natural environment. And I think all of us are doing that at different levels. There are people who are completely disconnected from their natural environment, spend most of their time indoors, on devices, doing very unnatural things, eating food that comes out of packages, just, just very unnatural kind of life. And then there are the people who are, you know, the eritarians that are basically living completely 100% in nature and everything in between. And I love watching the young people that are really getting, maybe they've always been into nature. I don't know, but this rewilding of like, and they're taking their little kids. So these are people in their twenties and thirties and you see 
some of them are homesteaders, which is a, a cool thing that's happening in the world. A lot of them are very interested in regenerative farming. They do really interesting work. They figured out ways to make money and, and have a significant, you know, be able to sustain their lifestyle, to have a living that also helps them stay in harmony with their natural environment. I tended to think of those people as more adventure type folks when I was younger, and that was not me. Like I really, it's not that I didn't like nature, didn't want to be in nature, but that was like for vacations, you know, not really for everyday life. And the more we get separated from our, our natural state, which we are part of nature, and the more we get away from th- that, the more problems we see with our mental health, with our physical health in our relationships, everything starts to kind of fall apart. And most of us don't think about looking to nature. We don't think about getting reharmonized with our natural environment. And to me, that's what rewilding is. And you can do that on different levels. But all of the people who only really spend time outdoors, maybe on the weekends a little bit and on vacations, you're missing a big piece of the puzzle in terms of your health, particularly our mental health, I would say, but for our health in general. So it's not just about, you know, going hiking and uh, camping outdoors. You could absolutely do that. And what I, you know, I think about that when I was younger, what I wish I had known when I was a new mom when I was rearing my little boys, we did lots of things really well and they were loved and you do the, you do what you do, right? You do the best that you can do. And I don't, they're, I don't regret the way that my kids grew up and the things that I know now that would have been really helpful then, you know, would be, I really would have put more emphasis on supporting their circadian rhythms and supporting mine. Because when I would get them to bed, I was really, really into good sleep. And so a little bit of a freak about making sure that the kids got good sleep really did great with the first one. The second one, you know, is always a little more challenging because you got to pick up the first one and do things that interrupt the second one and the third one's sleep. But I was really into making sure that the kids had good sleep because I knew that that was really important for brain development. I knew that that was really important for personality. Personality can actually change temperament. The thing that you think kids came in with this temperament can change with, with proper restorative sleep. It can change in adulthood too, by the way. So restorative sleep is really important. So I got that piece and I was really you know, good about making sure that we had good bedtime routines and got the kids down early and all of that. But then I would be like clocking out, right? My husband and I would be like, we're done for the day. And so I would maybe pour a glass of wine, go sit and vegetate in front of the TV, not paying attention to my own needs, my own sleep, my own. I mean, I've always been a really good sleeper. So I thought that that wasn't a problem, but now that I really understand circadian rhythms and how important supporting our circadian rhythms are, because it, it's the, it's harmonizing everything inside of the body. So being in harmony with our natural environment, particularly the light and dark cycles of the day, but also the food that we eat, the time of day that we eat, that we exercise, um, when we socialize, when we have time to ourselves to pray or meditate or be in silence. All of those things are important in a 24 hour cycle. We are diurnal beings. Human beings are diurnal. I probably would have argued when I was in my twenties that I was a night owl and that I just had a different programming and that I just got more done at night. I still kind of feel like I like to work in the evenings. I don't know if I sort of trained myself that way because I used to teach in the evenings and on weekends because it was better for our family. It was a great gig for the family. But now I think about all of the health problems (laughs) 
the health problems that come about, the thyroid problems, the hormone issues, the weight gain, all of the things that people complain about which people complain are related to your circadian rhythms, to being out of sync with your natural environment, eating foods that make zero sense in terms of helping your body orient to the season it's in, to the time. It's so when we eat, what we eat, all of those things. So I wish I had known that. And what's exciting about rewilding, like getting back to nature, getting back to our own nature, really understanding our place, knowing where we belong, not just in our families, which is cool, not in our community, but also where we belong within nature. That can help tremendously with all your health problems. So that's what I wish I had known, but we can rewild ourselves at any time. We can get back into nature. Here's what I want to tell you. I got that intellectually. I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. I was taking a couple, I took a couple of workshops on mitochondrial health. I was understanding things more about healing on a cellular level. I didn't understand about half of what I was learning, but you know, you pick it up as you go. I didn't go to medical school. So a lot of the words that are used, sometimes I don't understand, but I don't even think you understand them if you necessarily, if you go to medical school, because when you're talking about quantum biology, it's just a different way of looking at things. And I had to, it was a process. I had to allow myself to make up with nature, maybe even. I don't know the way to really describe this, but to allow nature to help me heal, there was some work to be done there. There was a little bit of friction. And I think about people who have experienced some trauma in nature. Like I have a friend that uh, almost died from an ant bite. I think about, you know, different people that have had accidents like um, in the ocean or whatever, something that's related to a fall out of a tree, like something. And everyone that I know personally that had something like that doesn't actually hate nature. They still spend time in nature. They still love nature. But I am just saying that sometimes maybe we've gotten so far removed that we're so comfortable indoors and on all of our technology and things that we're not really allowing nature to really help us heal completely. So that may take a little effort, time, consideration, exploration, something like that. The other thing that I would say, I just sort of accidentally naturally did this. I started going out for sunrise because somebody said that it would really change your life. And so I thought, whatever, I'll do that. And it did and it didn't, right? It became this thing that felt good that I, and it just became this ritual that I would do. And then I started really carving out the time to make it a priority. But if you start popping out later in the day, it's not that light breaks are going to be bad for you, but there is a building up of a solar callus. So for people who are really attached to all of your clothing and your sunglasses and your sunscreen and have become afraid of the sun, you might need to take, it might be a process. You may need to take some time, some exploration around that fear that you have with our sun and sunlight and do that in a really conscious way so that you're building more and more time out in nature. However, that, that makes sense to you there. I'm just telling you that I'm trying to maybe not warn, warn, but I'm trying to warn you that it might not be as simple or easy as you thought, even though it's super simple to do, you might have to work with yourself. There may be some resistance there. There may be something that comes up that surprises you a little bit, or you're not even aware of it for a little while. And then also the building of the solar callus, because we get really attached to our sunglasses and being in shade and indoors, 
So it takes a little while for the body to get used to being outdoors again without sunglasses, without sunscreen. And I'm not saying go out in the middle of the day and burn. What I'm saying is go out in early morning light and an evening light and work your way to more time in the middle of the day, especially if you're trying to get the UVB light, UV light. So UVB, um, that's how we make our vitamin D. So it's important to get some of that light, but you want to do small doses at first and then work on your solar callus where you can spend more and more time outdoors. So for a while, that might be, you know, a minute or two without your sunglasses until you're like me, where you don't even remember, you don't have any idea where your sunglasses are located anymore. I, I think the, those of us who are maybe not going to go live out in nature all the time, the super adventure type, we, we actually might surprise ourselves how much we enjoy more adventure, the more we're actually outside and in harmony with our natural environment. But that might look different for every person, it might look di- differently for you, where you're more in your community, seeing what feels right to you, spending a little more time outside, getting up and getting early morning light. So more regularly, if you don't do that regularly now, to just see how that help if that helps you. I know it's going to help you see it. So Um, But it may take a little while and you might have some resistance to it. You may have told yourself that you're a night owl and that you can't get up or you might have sleep problems or all kinds of issues or I was going to say excuses. They are kind of excuses of why you can't get up, but they're legit excuses. There are a lot of reasons that we don't get up early in the morning because we've got things to do and you have to actually craft your life and rearrange things so that you prioritize. And if health is your priority, then you are going to have to make some changes um, to your life. That's, you know, everyone who prioritizes their health knows that that's just the way that, that that goes. That the way that modern society tells us to live our lives is not necessarily helpful when we are trying to prioritize our health. I, I The only other things I wish I had done or I wish I had known to prioritize my kids' circadian rhythms and been more protective of that, especially at night. We really worked hard to, I worked really hard to keep them off of electronics, but they were, we still utilized electronics and and TV and all of that sort of stuff. But I would, I did really work hard to keep them outside and keep them busy and keep them off of the TV. And then later, once they get phones, I mean, it's over people. (laughs) Every every, last night we were at dinner and every kid in the restaurant was on a device. They have iPads, they have phones, they're looking down, they've got, you know, the, that position of the neck is down and they're on a screen. And I would just say as much as we possibly can As long as you can, keep them off the screens and as much as you can, keep them off the screens, keep them in nature and take them and prioritize your own health, support your own circadian rhythms, get real protective about the light at night. Um, You can just get blue blocking glasses. That's if you're still going to be on a device or need to be on a device or in bright lights then you just do what you can do. I'll also link where I get my, all of my red light therapy and my blue blocking glasses and all that stuff. I'll link all that stuff in the show notes so you can get some discount codes and get yourself all set up. But it's most of the stuff is free. Reorienting yourself, rewilding is a, is free. You're going to be buying food anyway, but buying really good food might cost that might cost you some money, but walking around barefoot outside, touching trees, being in nature, really timing, getting your life oriented to the natural light and dark cycles of the day, all of those taking light breaks out in the day, cracking the window on in the car so that you're getting some natural light, spending less and less time with sunglasses, all of those things are free. So 
it's it's not really about that. It's about figuring it out and being really compassionate with yourself. Just be kind to yourself as you figure these things out. And if you're noticing that you're having some resistance, don't, what I always say is like, if you're squashing it down, it's going to pop up somewhere else in some other way. And that's how we get chronically stressed and anxious as we keep pushing things down and storing things or ignoring things that are trying to come up. And that's when we get sick. So actually learning to just pull it to the front, say, okay, there's resistance. Wonder what's going on. Get curious about that. And anything that you can do to help your nervous system is going to be helpful in moving forward. So where you're headed and where you're going, if you're wanting health to be a part of that, then supporting the nervous system is a key. Every single person that I have interviewed or that I've worked with or I've talked to with any kind of chronic illness, chronic stress, chronic anxiety, any kind of chronic um, pain, illness, autoimmune issues, digestive issues, you name it, 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 every single person that has found their way to nervous system regulation exercises what I would call resourcing, like ways to support your nervous system to be in rest and digest when you need to be, which is parasympathetic nervous system, and being able to go back and forth, like back and forth is not really a good way to describe that. But when your body needs to alert you, we need the sympathetic nervous system, that stress response. We actually need that. That is part of our wiring, but we are also wired with the relaxation response. So the stress and the relaxation response, we are meant to move through those experiences in life where what is needed and which part of our nervous system is needed is activated at that time. And there's some coherence within the body. So we're looking for coherence more than we're looking for always being in parasympathetic. That's not actually realistic to always be in parasympathetic. But what we do want is when you're eating in that rest and digest, you want to be in a parasympathetic state. And so many people are dysregulated. Our nervous systems are so dysregulated that we're kind of constantly in that fight, flight, flop, just um, stress response, even when we're eating, while we're doing all the things that we're doing. And so it's just wearing us out. You know, it'd be like, you know, slamming on the accelerator all the time in a car, it's going to wear everything out faster. So you want to be able to accelerate when you need to, you want to be able to have the stress response appropriate when it needs to be, but then also back off and hit the brakes when you need to be able to do that and go. That's what I mean by that back and forth and that flow and the coherence. So that's really all I wanted to talk about with rewilding. You can leave comments. Let me know what you think about rewilding, what that means to you, and the ways that maybe you have found to be more in harmony with your natural environment. You know, there there must be a million ways to do that. So, So I'm happy to hear from all of you. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate all the people who listen. And I'm so grateful for the people who subscribe. That is very helpful for us. So thank you so much. Take care, everyone.